some sort of metal stuff here. They got an ice machine that's not working right, so let's go see what they got going on. Never been here. Oh yeah, I need hearing protection to work on this thing. Put my tool bag here on one of the tractors. Let's see what we got going on here. I guess it's just not one to work. Go figure, right? Hmm. Got a little bit of growth, not too bad. What I can see. Ah, the water's kind of full. Ah, bet you we have something wrong with our, with our uh, probe. A little bit of calcium and nastiness there. Let's get this thing. There we go. Cool. Let's see what we're doing now. I'd rather see rust any day over the nasty stuff. It will affect the thickness probe. As you can see, we're overfilled here. The probe's probably not doing its job. Got the old fashioned traditional uh, thickness sensor. I think what I'm gonna do, let's see what our codes and stuff are here first. This old machine generally comes down to just needing it cleaned. Uh, they're punching out metal and stuff to be recycled, so you may not be able to hear me very well. All right, so we have an SL1 blinking multiple times, not a usual pattern. Usually you just see like one, two, or three, or something like that, but it's consistent. Usually they'll put it over here on this uh, panel. Let's see if we can find that safety limit. See, normally one flash or two flashes, but we don't have that. It's kind of a weird one. Yeah, neither of the normal ones that you normally would hear. I mean, we can tell that we've got a lot of crud up in here. False, false alarm, it's got too much calcium in there. That's gonna cause an unequal uh, water path. It's gonna go to freeze right. All right, well, it's a chill power. <laughs> when in doubt, reboot, right? Water probe shows that it has water. Just gonna put that door back on so it ain't gonna do crap. Get a little iron in your diet. Okay. Water broke in, left bin. Which we open and close. It is working. Cool. Okay, put it back to ice and see what it does here. Wait a minute. We we got a last uh, blank recoil, so maybe it was just telling us that there's a problem. It's been a while since I've worked on this thing, this model. All right, let's watch how many blinks it's got when you turn it on. And button's about shot. That's lovely. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. I think it was just one blank. Let's try it one more time. One. Just one blank. All right. It, like I said, it's been a while. Ice machine's freeze time exceeded 60 minutes consecutively six times in a row. Not freezing. We had plenty of water though. What do we got here? Low water pressure, high water pressure, effective water pump system. Probe out of adjustment. Well, if it never reached the probe or if they don't think it reached it, that would cause it. We test the probe real quick by touching it to metal. Let's see if it just lights up. Yep. So there's the probe. See that? probe in our hand. See it showing up. So it's obviously working. The biggest thing you run into sometimes on a dirty machine is it'll think that it's actually got stuff on it. That'll uh, ice water on it and it's making contact. So, and I've had that time uh, before where you just got to blow it out real good. If there's any water up inside that after you cleaned it, that it'll cause it to false alarm and prematurely um, going to harvest after the seven minute lockout. The fan looks like it's going a little slow. The air filter, I looked at that earlier, and it's a little dirty. Looks like it's clean back in 17, so we'll get that cleaned up on it. Not the warmest air in the world. Let your 
discharge gas. It's obviously not real super hot. Might be low. Maybe not. You got cold coming back to the compressor. That fan really looks like it's acting dumb. It might be a fan cycle switch. We only had a lot of those go bad. It's got a pretty good breeze. And it's just deceiving because there's not good lighting in here. Pretty warm. I bet we're okay on refrigerant. Let's go ahead and get that filter cleaned out of there. Oh my! See that? Looks like a monster truck race is going on. Look at that. <laughs> Good grief. Well, we had a hose here. This outside wall. Factory. This went on outside. Doesn't look too bad. trick it because it has ice pretty well built up on it like i showed earlier we're going to put that probe we unhooked it put it up against the ice it's going to have to make for 10 seconds and it's going to go into a harvest once that uh water shield there we go once the water shield opens up then it kicks out of the harvest it's got three and a half minutes for it to do that if it doesn't then it gives it like i think two strikes and then eventually it locks out it's three times actually like I said, this control board was the first one I started with, and it's just been forever since I've worked on it. They're pretty much about all gone. All right, so this clean switch is stock. It won't switch freeze to whatever. 5 16 screw up there. All it is is a generic rocker switch in there. It's down here, shorts one uh, common to one or the other. We're gonna see if we can blow it out or something to get it going. We'll need to order a new one. I can't get it to go into freeze or into cooling, which kind of makes it a little difficult to clean the machine. I tried cleaning those before and it never works. Uh, we may just short it together one way or the other to make it run. We got it out. We sprayed it down with some uh, liquid wrench over there. It uh, works pretty good now. I'll still order a new switch, but it's non-conductive. It usually works. I mean, when it's this dusty in here, it's going to attract more. But I can't clean the machine without jumping it, and I don't want to hassle with it. So if I can salvage it good enough to get me by, I will do that. Let's get all this lovely black crap out of here. There's really no good place to wash anything here because it's a factory, a very dirty factory. We'll have to do it in the bathroom, unfortunately, in a sink most hygienic place in the world but it's better than what it looks like now so normally they use three ounces most of the time they're anticipating people actually take care of the machine before it breaks in a maintenance schedule which nobody usually does unless they're mandatorily forced to we're running half a bottle which is about eight ounces that'll just barely get it done even then we'll still have to scrub we we'll use the remainder in the uh, pan there Scrub with that to get the last remaining stuff out of here. I'm not going to be overly concerned with all the rock and calcium and all that stuff. Uh, at this point, I just want it to be healthy, safe, and going on in the way. Uh, beauty contest isn't going to happen in a place like this. Uh, it's going to get blasted with uh, pet stuff and everything else they got going on in here. I mean, it's, it's quite a quite an environment for it. it really should be, uh, dedicated for it but unfortunately you really can't do that all right so this is probably one of the most interesting places i've ever had to clean my ice machine at but it's filthy and nasty but we'll try to get her as clean as we can be sure to run a little extra sanitizing solution through it to kind of kill any bathroom gunk that might have got in there uh you know what are you supposed to do buddy what are you supposed to do so let's go ahead and get busy on this thing 
I'm not going to show you how to scrub. You guys probably have figured that out by now. But yeah, let's get this gunk out of there. So that cleaned up pretty good, and that cleaned up pretty good. Not bad for bathroom stall clean job. Let's see if we can get this last bit of crud here done. Pop this turkey out. We ain't gonna have that nasty mold crap behind her like normal. A lot of this, this is just gonna float right back down. Cause like I said, I mean, you got, you're in an industrial application here. Uh, they're cutting metal over there, stamping it out, a little of everything. They don't really have a break room. So there's not a kitchen area. I mean, this is closest thing you got to a break room. Uh, so there's no kitchen sink or anything like that. At least not that I know of. I've never been here before and no one showed it to me, so I'm not going to wander around too awful much. Let's see if we can get this uh, nasty thing out of there and get that cleaned up. Usually gets hung up on something here. There you go. That's the kind of dirt we got in the back inside, so pull that little turkey apart. There we go, wonderful. That soak, we're gonna let this soak. Just let that, uh, get that all in the, its tight spots. And see if we can get the build up off of it. Now, like I said, I usually have to blow this thing out with nitrogen uh, afterwards because the uh, water usually doesn't get deep up inside there and it'll cause it to think that it's touching the ice and it'll false alarm out. So I've tried blowing it out uh, by hand and that don't work. So literally I got to blast it out with nitrogen usually. Probably could use my blower from my uh, Milwaukee, what have you. So we'll let that soak. Let's get the rest of this stuff apart. I think I'm going to rename this the Hot Lizard or the Less Than Pretty Woman. So it's actually got a pretty decent looking. Not bad, honestly, for a bathroom cleanup. That's why I'm going to call it a uh, lot lizard there, kind of like a truck driver special. Because uh, we're actually able to get all this stuff cleaned up, and in the uh, environment that I'm working in, I'm uh, pretty impressed with uh, the results for what I had to work with, the environment I had to clean it up in. So, for the most part, it's all gone good. It's going to get really dirty afterwards, but that's not my problem. I'm really worried about what it looks like when I got done. So we've got it all cleaned up. Let's go ahead and get it back together. Let's see if this thing will make ice now. I think honestly it comes down to uh, filthiness. Uh, generally 90% of the calls out there are going to be filthiness. Very few are actually going to be a control board failure. Uh, and then the left the part usually is uh, just, you know, the control board is bad. I mean, that's even the back of the thing that their control board used to feel very often. Most of the time it's water related, more than refrigerated related. So I'm going to go with that. You know, we had a switch here that was working for squat. We had a nasty uh, evaporator plate. We had water distribution tubes that was completely nasty. Uh, we got all that cleaned up. We got the plate uh, descaled. The plate, you know, when it has that scale on it, like sandpaper onto paint, how it holds onto it. The same thing here. It's not gonna let the ice fall off. It's gonna result in a long harvest. We got all this cleaned up. Up underneath there looks pretty good. We don't have any uh, yeast contaminants in the air like uh, traditional uh, kitchen areas and stuff. So it's looking pretty good. So let's get it back together and see what we get. Let's go ahead and turn on ice. We did go ahead and blow out the sensors, make sure there's no water up in there. Come over here to the uh, LEDs. You can see that we don't have any LEDs for the water probe or for the ice probe, which is good. We're going to go ahead and put it on uh, ice mode. It looks to me like it's starting to fill. I don't believe this thing has a water filter. Right, it was starting to fill. That's nice. What do we got here? We got a Pop hose there and the water line comes over to here and you wonder why the water is not that great. Comes over to here to that. Which comes to the same bathroom water we were using to clean. So it does not appear that we have us a water filter on it. That's optional obviously. There we go. Good strong stream. The way everything else looks that would be probably just more of a hassle to have to replace the water filter. And honestly their water here seems like it's halfway decent. Uh, it's not near as bad as the city that uh, I work in, uh, a couple of the other cities. So it seems that they might have a little bit better water treatment system here. Uh, so anyhow, got that.
let's go ahead and uh, see what it does and how long it takes to uh, freeze down. I'll start my stopwatch soon as the water pump comes on. And we should have ice somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes on average. Fire usually in a uh, minute and a half. Minute and a half so we're not I went out to the truck to fill out my paperwork. Got all the information in the, the uh, tablet. Looks like we're just about out of water there. And we are in a harvest right now, which would cause the system to go for a long freeze. Unfortunately, I didn't get to time it to see how fast it can harvest. Uh, if it is low on refrigerant, harvest is where it's gonna fail at. But let's take a look here and see. Hopefully it drops before that time up. Usually I can reach back behind here and see if I can feel it releasing. It does not feel like it's releasing between the plate and the ice. I just turned around to grab a gauge and it dropped it. Looks like we have ice. All right, well, let's uh, make another batch here. Let's time it this time. And uh, we'll watch and see where that's at. We may need to make it a little thinner, possibly. All right, so I think I just heard my first click. We should be probably going into harvest about now. Probe's just barely touching. We're gonna make a quick adjustment. We did finally go to tablets here at the company well, a year ago and finally just got them passed out. So now I've got a uh, way to check my temperatures and pressures a little easier. Let's go ahead and do a quick adjustment. Just uh, adjust that thickness sensor. Okay, we made a quick adjustment. It's lit up. Should be about 10 seconds. Should go into harvest. We're watching our suction pressure there. We're going up into the 90 plus area, which generally is a good sign. Uh, best compressor superheat, and you got to watch the subcooling. You can't really necessarily go with that because uh, there's a deep superheater or a subcooler in the back of this machine. They tie the uh, suction and liquid together, depending on where you're at. But looking pretty good. That was a minute and 28 seconds. So as long as those thickness, the bridge thicknesses are good, which our bridge thickness is right there between the cubes, that little spot right there is an eighth of an inch, we're looking good. You can also go by your uh, probe setting. You can set, you know, a basis point to get started but looking pretty good so far. Usually that pressure switch comes on, I believe about 2.30ish, which it's running right now. It's cooling it down to about 90 area. So it might be a little out of whack. 2.35 I thought was the setting for it. We'll watch that a little bit, kind of see where we're at. It's really hard to get to, but it does appear that we're getting in the right, right area there. Like I said, usually when you start hearing a crackle of the plate, you're probably going just a touch too far. When that's doing is it's expanding to the point where it's gonna start shifting your uh, nickel coated evaporator there and you can crack that thing loose and then next thing you know, you've got the little slats falling out and you've ruined your evaporator. So I really don't like hearing that. Once that's done, generally, I mean, it can run without a few of the slats, but you're on the edge of uh, nowhere going good so it's uh, it'll be ready for replacement for long got the water probes full you'll have some flashing there on the uh, ice probe that's pretty normal it's when it has to stay when it stays there for 10 seconds that's when you know you're gonna lock into the harvest otherwise don't get too excited if it's just blinking every now and again well guys that's gonna wrap this thing up it's working good just had to run through a couple more modes of operation to make sure everything was working the machine was dirty, it's in a really bad environment. I told them that it'd be best if they could box this area in, keep the dust out. Uh, you know, additive water filter wouldn't be a bad idea. Other than that, for the most part, for the age of it, it's working really good. If you guys enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click the notification. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.